Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So on the agenda tonight, we have Randy Rhodes, and this is going to be coming from the After Hours TV show performance, of course, with Ozzy Osbourne. And there's not a great deal of footage of Randy on the internet and on YouTube, so it's great to be able to see him playing through a whole track. So let's get Randy up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm just going to jump in here because sometimes Ozzy just looks like a member of the crowd just getting into the great playing, absolutely solid bass and drums going on as well. But turning the attention to Randy, I think a lot of people don't realize that this is an effective three-piece setup. I know that we've got Ozzy out there on vocals, but if Randy was singing, just trying to imagine that, that Randy's singing and playing at the same time, there's not a great deal here that can actually fill in all of those frequencies frequencies that you might get when you've got two guitars and bass and maybe some keys as well. So Randy does so much work that absolutely flies under the radar in terms of the overall sound of Ozzy Osbourne. The way that he lays down the rhythm is so tight and punchy with that rhythm as well. And the way that he controls the dynamics in the verses. I know that we've got this standard A riff that happens in the verses, but the really subtle way that he controls the dynamics within that little run. Another thing that Randy was great at doing was throwing in those pinched harmonics and also those natural harmonics which we've actually got in this track but the pinched harmonics are one of those things that I'd say that Randy was so tasteful in the way that he did it of course that's down to everybody's personal taste whether you like to hear a lot of pinched harmonics and natural harmonics or whether you don't I personally like them to be just dotted around I don't want to hear them all the time but again that's just personal taste and for me Randy was the king of of just putting in a pinched harmonic so that it stood out as a technique. It's such a classic 80s technique, but one of those classic techniques that Randy would throw in there so tastefully that it pops out and people would think, whoa, what just happened? What was that? What happened to my ears? What, where did that note come from? And that's what a pinched harmonic to me is all about, just putting a totally different flavor on a run that you might have already heard before, just to give it another little interesting element to it. Another thing that I love about Randy and the way that he played was that he was almost the perfect mix of styles in terms of being that devoted classical player when he was young, when he started learning. And you'll see that in his technique, the way that that hand pops into that classical position. Even here, you can see a little bit of that thumb starting just to poke over the top of the guitar, but he's mostly for his riffs and runs and solos with that thumb behind the neck, which is a classical position. Whereas then the contemporary position of having that thumb over the top of the neck, you'll also see Randy pop into that shape as well when he wants a root note on that low E string. So it makes him so versatile in the way that he can play. 
And it's funny because this kind of music is so far removed from classical music, and I'm sure a lot of classical guys would never even dream of listening to this style of music, this genre of music. And it's so ironic that Randy had all of that classical training and technical ability on a classical guitar, but then decided to make that jump in genres. And that was very much down to the fact that he went to a gig with his brother, and that was an Alice Cooper gig. And from that gig on was his brother said he just stared at the stage and realized that that's what he wanted to do this was the kind of music he wanted to make and above all that he could do this he looked at the stage and said i can do that but i always say this that the top techniques always cross over so randy absolutely would take all of that classical ability he had and now apply it to a different genre and it doesn't mean that it's now suddenly not going to fit because once you've got top technical ability and you can apply it like Randy could, it doesn't matter what genre you're playing, it's just different notes give a slightly different sound and therefore a slightly different sounding genre or style to your playing. But let's get back into it. I just want to jump straight into that solo because the main thing I want to point out about Randy's playing is the clarity. And what I mean by that, not only the notes that he's playing, how clear and concise they are within his runs with alternate picking, hammer-ons and pull-offs, all of those little things that you almost take for granted because he does them so well, but also how he keeps the rest of the guitar so quiet. Have a little look, rewind it if you need to. Look at Randy's right hand the way that he's got it fanned out, pressed against the strings that he's not playing. But listen again to that solo, just because it's a great solo anyway, but now listen to the technical elements that Randy throws in there, keeping it so quiet, so that every note you hear is just lead. Just while we're looking at Rudy, Rudy Sarzo here on bass, but also Tommy Aldridge on drums, because that foundation has to be so solid in this effective three-piece setup, like I mentioned before. Obviously, Randy's rhythm part playing is absolutely top notch as well. Obviously he can melt your face with the lead line, but this rhythm work has to be spot on and they all absolutely back up Ozzy to the nth degree, to the point where Ozzy is just enjoying how tight and how great this sound is. And another thing is the way that Rudy's throwing in this showmanship of striking the guitar instead of plucking it. And if you don't know how it works, if you are fretting a note on the bass or on a guitar, if you strike it, you're going to make those strings resonate. And whatever you holding down you'll then be able to hear it so he's just replacing the picks with strikes let's get back into it
we go. And another thing I want to point out quickly, if you want to, you can rewind it just to hear the way that during that verse, again, it's classic Randy Rhodes, the way that he threw the riff up an octave, which just makes the riff stand out. It gives you something different. And then in the next time they played through it, he then puts in that really cool pinched harmonic squeal. And everything that he did just made it interesting. It's so easy when there's only one guitar and you're just playing straight rhythm for that rhythm to become mundane and boring because you're just hearing the same thing over and over again from the same player. But Randy absolutely had every trick up his sleeve in order to make even the most mundane guitar line or riff stand out and sound different every time he played it with pinched harmonics, throwing in a little bit of vibrato here and there. And it's interesting because on my last Randy Rhodes video, which is quite a while ago now. I actually had a comment from somebody who saw him live and actually bumped into him before a gig and Randy was just rushing around and they said, oh, hi, Randy, you know, I just wanted to chat to him and he said, oh, I can't talk for long because unfortunately I've got to go to a guitar lesson. And this person said, but you're Randy Rhodes. How could you need a guitar lesson? And he looked up guitar teachers when he'd be on tour He'd look up guitar teachers in all the towns and cities where he was actually visiting because he said to this person that you can never know enough. Somebody else always knows something that you don't. So he would always pick the brains of anyone he could, no matter where he was. So his brain was an absolute sponge for information, for technique, for stylizations. And that absolutely comes across when he's playing through just standard riffs because every time he plays them, he can add something to them. He can change it. But Randy, as a player, you could analyze him for years because he's got so many different stylizations and the fact that he can play different genres coming from the classical over into now hard rock, heavy metal, all these different techniques that have really given him a unique take, that neoclassical sound. But I alluded to this in the first video, what could Randy have achieved dying so young at only 25? I know that he had aspirations of getting a degree in music as well and I wasn't sure that he would have stayed with Ozzy for much longer because of Ozzy and drug use and him just wanting to really push forward and always achieve more and do more and learn more all the time. But even with the little bits of footage that we have of Randy, you can see what a great guitarist he was. And also, of course, we've got all the studio work and being able to hear him actually laying stuff down in the studio. But it's a shame there isn't more video of Randy. And it's just one of those guys that could have been absolutely one of the top players, if not the top player in his genre and pretty much any genre that he wanted to, whether he would have gone back to classical or stayed in the hard rock, metal, heavy metal genres, because he had the ability to play it all. But thank you so much for this request to revisit Randy Rhodes and for the link to the video in the first place. And keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.